Hi everyone, this is Amy and Andy. We are so excited to have Kevin Pengeli of Pengeli Photography with us on the show today. Kevin is a very well accomplished wedding photographer working out of Cambridge, Essex, Suffolk and Nor Norfolk with his lovely wife Sabrina. And he's just awesome. Kevin and Sabrina are such awesome people. So we're so excited to have you on the show, Kevin. He also recently came on as a Fundy Designer UK Ambassador. That's awesome, Kevin. And we're going to be looking at some of his photographs and also talking about his five best practices for capturing wedding memories. Number one, plan out the day. Number two, prepare your equipment. Number three, Look for natural moments. Number four, understand light and know your composition. And finally, number five, enjoy the day and have fun. So again, thanks so much for being on with us, Kevin. Absolute pleasure. It's really good to see you guys. It is so good to see you too. The pleasure is truly ours. No, it's, it's really good to be here. I'm, yeah. I'm really honored. Great. Um, so we, we had a little bit of a, a chance to uh, meet each other uh, live, not just uh, via email uh, before. And uh, you have a really cool story. So we'd love to hear about how you got into wedding photography and tell us a little bit about your business and just what you love the most about being a wedding photographer. Yeah, sure. I mean, it, it's quite a story, actually. Uh, when I left school, uh, like any 16-year-old, I had great plans in my life, and I was actually signed by Norwich City Football Club as a, an apprentice, uh, but only after six months against Watford, I actually ripped my pelvis apart. So I played on for a little while, but I had the club doctor come to see me and say, look, Kevin, you're going to have to pack up, otherwise uh, you're going to have some serious repercussions, i.e. not being able to walk. So as a 16-year-old, it was quite devastating. But this is the thing. My dad was actually a wedding photographer in the 50s, and he used an old Yashica Mat twin reflex 120 roll film camera, and I actually picked that up at the age of three. So I thought... What am I going to do? So would you believe I actually started motorsports photography. So for 15 years, I worked for Motoring News and Autosport, traveling all around the country, photographing great racing drivers, even the late, great Ayrton Senna, God rest his soul, when he used to race at a um, circuit called Senetterton, which is at Norfolk with Martin Brundle. But to get into wedding photography, um, basically two friends of mine were having a double wedding. So picture this, two brides, two grooms, they booked a photographer, but unfortunately, he let them down. So they came knocking on my door, <laughs> knocking on my door and say, hey, Kev, do you want to be a wedding photographer? And I said, no, guys, I'm a motorsports photographer. <laughs> so they said, no, you're now a wedding photographer. So I said, okay, I'll try it. So we had an absolute ball. We had Cadillacs, we had Elvis impersonators and everything. And I had an absolutely fantastic day. Grabbed loads of great shots for them. So just remember, two brides, two grooms. Okay, so oh. talk about going at the deep end on that one. So I thought, oh, this isn't too bad. They were really happy with the images I captured. So I thought I'd do this properly. So I literally went out bought some Bronica SQBs, Metz 45 CL flash guns, and done it properly. So within six months, I got six weddings. Then the following year, I got 24 weddings, then 36, wow. and then from basically then on, 72 weddings a year. But we've cut back now because I'm getting a little bit older now. <laughs> yes. So it takes, it, it takes a little bit out of me. But what I love about uh, wedding photography is meeting great people you know we we really have met some great couples that have become personal friends and the venues we go to are absolutely fantastic so that's what i love about photography capturing special moments for couples and bringing back memories when they look through the images that we capture hopefully that is a little understanding on how i got into wedding photography yeah. That's a great, that is an absolutely great story, Kevin, and I, I can imagine that you absolutely have learned a ton, uh, not only from your first, from your first wedding, but doing yeah. 70 weddings a year is, is unbelievable. Yeah. And, uh, 
so thank you for being here because you have just a wealth of experience. So uh, thank you. Um, we are going to uh, chat about uh, your tips for us today. Um, yeah, sure. What you've learned over the years. Uh, so we're going to uh, do a quick little uh, screen share here and uh, go into uh, some of the photographs that you sent over yeah. to us. And uh, your first tip is uh, planning out the day, which, uh, you know, really is critical, not only knowing uh, kind of like what you're getting into, but that time spent with the with the couple so you know uh, what they're looking for as well. It, it, exactly. I mean, planning is absolute paramount as far as we're concerned with the way we photograph weddings. I mean, if anyone who's listening is starting out in photography, you know, planning is so important. We have meetings with our couples and we know exactly what they want. But the thing to remember with wedding photography, you have only got an allocated time to get those great shots. So it is quite pressurized. But if you plan everything, know exactly what you got to do but the most important thing is if the timings go right absolutely fantastic but more often than not timings don't always go to plan like the bride might be late the groom might be late uh, friends or family are late so it's adapting so not only having a plan A but B and C and weather is a great importance because the good old British weather doesn't always play ball with us it's been lovely lately but at the start of the year, we had to contend with rain, snow, wind, everything. So just make sure you really plan out that you know what the couple wants. So throughout the day, you're capturing great memories for them. Great. Fantastic. Um, and kind of uh, talking about uh, great memories and kind of planning out the day. I know like one of the things you talked about uh, in the article uh, that you uh, worked with us on for SLR Lounge was really uh, – you know, in that planning, talking about group shots, because you don't want to miss yeah. any of those like critical photographs. Like, hey, I really wanted a picture with, uh, you know, uh, my mom uh, and uh, my cousin, so and so, and then boom, you missed it because you didn't talk to them beforehand. Uh, exactly. I'm gonna actually, pull up one of your your uh, group shots that you sent over to us and uh, tell us a little bit about this photograph. Uh, this wedding was one of the most awesome weddings we've captured this year. I mean, all, the, all our weddings are lovely. Please don't get me wrong. But these guys and girls were such great fun to work with. It's the first wedding where they were actually chanting my name as we went. You know, they were saying there was only one Kevin Pengelly, a true legend. But we had great fun. And that's the thing with being a wedding photographer. You're not only there to capture their memories, but you've got to be a people person, knowing how to talk to people. Yes, sometimes you've got to sort of control people into certain positions, but it's having fun with people. It's like this shot. We, we just said, you know, just walk to us and laugh hysterically, but they didn't need much encouragement. As you can see, by the time they got to us, they were literally falling on the floor, laughing, belly laughing. So it's having fun, but getting great shots as well and being part of their special day. You know, so many times, uh, it's a shame I can't show you all the testimonials we got, but we get so many cards saying, oh, you were such a great part of the day. And, you know, we get Christmas cards and everything now. So that's what it's all about, just being a people person and making sure you do what these people want. Yeah, great, fantastic advice. And um, tell us about so what your other your other uh, your second uh, best practice tip for us was to uh, prepare your equipment, which I think a lot of people would say, well, of course, prepare your equipment. But yeah. uh, one thing you were saying was, you know, planning for weather. And I know for Amy and I, that's not something that we're always thinking about uh, in Arizona, where it basically doesn't <laughs> rain very right. often. Yeah. Uh, we have to always remember, make sure we pack that rain gear just in case. Yeah, uh, exactly. If we're traveling for a wedding. So talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, how you guys prepare your equipment. And you guys are basically ready to go the day before. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, we, we carry four cameras. I know when people are starting out, they're not really blessed with the budgets to get all the equipment. But one thing I've learned is with mechanical cameras, they do seem to last. I mean, my dad's camera is still in perfect walking, uh, working order, and I could still shoot a wedding with it. But obviously, it doesn't really fit the format on what we photograph. But 
basically preparing your cam cameras is they are dust magnets. They really are because they're computerized instruments. We blow them out, we clean them, clean the sensors, basically wipe them down and everything, charge the batteries. I'll give you an example on how people don't prepare their equipment. A few years ago, we were sitting in the office actually editing a wedding. We get a phone call from a venue. And they say, oh, hi, Kevin, how's it going? So I said, yeah, fine. They said, are you busy? So I said, uh, well, I'm editing a wedding. Why is that? And they said, we've got a photographer here. Their camera has broken down and they haven't got a spare. So that is the main thing I would suggest to anyone. Please make sure you have got a spare camera because what happens if your camera breaks down? And I've been in this profession quite a few years now and we've had cameras break down, but we just go to our bag, pick up a camera. We carry uh, two D4Ss and our back out cameras are two D3Ss. So four cameras, we're using two, but we've literally got two backups. We carry loads and loads. I've got about 200 spare batteries, about the same with CF cards, flash guns, pocket wizards, and everything, all uh, other remotes. Uh, I'll give you an examples of what we carry in our bag for the bride and grooms. We carry crochet hooks, cufflinks, Last year, I've never known so many guys to basically forget their cufflinks. Hairspray, scissors, sewing kits, curvy grips, antihistamine, plasters, mm -hmm. etc. That's what we carry in our camera bag because throughout the years, people have said, oh, by the way, have you got that? Now, I've got to give you a funny story. I hope it's not going to be too uh, bad on this. We actually, the other week, <laughs> The guy came up to us, he said, Kevin, I know you've got a lot in your bag. He said, you haven't got a spare underpants, have you? And I said, no, we've, we don't go that far with our camera equipment. So that was a new one on us. But normally we've got loads of spares for everything. So please, guys, if you are coming into wedding photography, make sure you prep your gear. Just because batteries are new doesn't mean they're going to work. Have spare batteries. Have spare CF cards. Spare batteries for your cameras, your flash guns, etc. So that really is good advice because, trust me, one day your camera won't work. Yeah, that's awesome advice. And uh, I, I like that you keep adding stuff uh, to it, like when situations yeah. come up. Um, but I'm not sure you're going to be adding the underwear. But maybe. Uh, no, 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 I think that, that draws the line. I mean, normally we're receptive to, to stuff. I mean, I'll give you an example. Last, last weekend's wedding, the guy... Uh, came over from Poland and he actually forgot his shoes. All the guys were wearing brown shoes. He had white training shoes. So oh, wow. we couldn't quite fit a per spare pair of brown <laughs> shoes in their bag either. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, uh, another thing uh, that, that you, uh, you like to do, uh, Kevin, you and Sabrina, is really look for uh, natural moments. So obviously, like, there's times for, uh, for posing uh, photographs, but even yeah. when you're doing that, you're looking for the more natural kind of thing. I think yeah. uh, this this photograph is a is a great uh, sort of uh, natural moment uh, where the the couple is uh, contemplative, and I'm guessing yeah. that's be the by the venue where they're at. It, it, exactly. I mean, with this type of shot, this is one of our favourite venues. Actually, it's a place called Hinnelsham Hall. We're actually there tomorrow photographing a very small, small wedding. But uh, the couple had just finished their wedding breakfast, and we said, "Hey guys, you know, it's a beautiful evening." You know, would you like to just come out for a walk with us? We can get some nice, relaxed shots. So we took them round to the back of this beautiful hotel and said, look, guys, just sit on the bench. There were some ducks in the pond. Just sit there, have a look there, take in the scene, relax. And while they're sitting there, to be quite honest with you, with this particular shot, they didn't even know we took that one. They thought we was going to go off to a different angle. But it's just trying to be nice and relaxed. So, I mean, this is a time, a timeless image because, you know, from the front, unfortunately, people age. But from the back, they don't really age. So this one is literally a timeless image. So it's just trying to capture people in a nice, relaxed environment and being 
being themselves basically we we do do pose shots but I don't try and pose up too much I try and let the wedding flow so I'm getting lovely relaxed shots but that's the uh, going back sorry to keep going back to the first point about planning we yeah. have a pre-wedding meeting where we know exactly what shots we do so on the day we don't have to go up to the couple and say oh hi hey guys what do you want us to do next that's awesome, and uh, I love that that tip about uh, photographing them from behind because uh, you know they don't age that way. So you know, exactly. Obviously, obviously uh, you know, when, when especially when people are printing these out in albums and, and hanging photographs on their wall, that's a that's a fantastic uh, fantastic point. I really yes. like that. Um, your your other point was uh, understanding light, knowing composition, yeah. and kind of that that last photograph I think really even relates to this one that we have up now. Yeah. Where obviously, you have to know what you're doing with the light because it's all coming in through those uh, gorgeous. Uh, yeah. You kind of have that similar kind of pose, you know, the beautiful window light. So yeah. uh, tell us about that and, and this photograph. Yeah, I mean, on on this particular image, uh, the, the light was very contrasty. There was harsh light coming in from the left. So basically it's trying to control it because if you actually expose for the, the light that's coming through the window, the bride would be in silhouette. So what we had is a big uh, reflector down the bottom. See where the checkered uh, dance floor is? We had a big reflector there. So basically it's kicking some light back in. So I exposed for the highlighted area. That is a mixture of two shots. So I took a reading made sure that the, the dress had detail in it. I mean, there is a little bit of spill on the light on the left-hand side, but that is a well-controlled shot, shot. So it's understanding how much light is coming through the window, exposing for that, but also kicking some light back so you expose correctly for the dress as well. So it's understanding light, what's light. I was very fortunate because with motorsports, uh, you had to understand light because it was all film cameras. So I used to photograph the wheel hire 24 hour. And so basically it used to be pitch black on some of the the, the light setups we had for the motor cars and when they're doing 120 mile an hour and it's getting the trails of the light it's understanding what light's going to do understanding how to shape it and basically manipulate it around the bride and groom to get the effect that you want fantastic yeah, that's, that's great um, and then I think uh, you know similarly uh, we're pulling up uh, this photograph of the couple uh, walking down a path yeah and uh, you know you have that same uh, have to have that same understanding of light and composition here. And I love how this is composed. You have the venue; it's it's really well uh, framed. And uh, tell us about this photograph and what you were thinking about. Yeah, but basically, one of the ideas I always have um, with bride and grooms. I love the idea of they're walking off into the sunset. They're starting out on their married life. They're going to go through a journey, and this is the start of their journey. So they had their first dance. As you can see, this was a summer wedding, so we're blessed with light quite um, sort of late into the evening. So I said, hey, guys, look, we, we've got beautiful light out here. Would you mind coming out again? So they said, yeah, sure. So came out and I said look just hold hands just walk down and that's the kind of feel that I'm trying to get once again it's timeless okay we've got the groom's uh, side profile there but the bride will never age okay because it's the back view but don't forget guys those that are listening with the bride most of the detail is at the back of the dress with this dress it was all buttoned up so we got beautiful detail in the back and it's making sure it's capturing that and this is the thing where Sabrina comes in, because normally if a bride walks, the dress normally puckers up to the sides. So Sabrina laid it out, and we just got them to walk a few steps. So just getting that feel of walking into a sunset, walking into the start of their life. Call me an old romantic as well with this. And it's, it's just trying to engage with romance and uh, their future life together. So that's the feel I'm trying to get on this particular image. Beautiful. Uh, and then let's pull up this other one. I think it's similar, uh, uh, you know, in talking about especially composition uh, is it's just great. Mm -hmm. You have the you have the veil, which an, an outstanding veil. Yeah. Off in both directions. Yeah. yeah well, there, there, there is a little bit of a trick 
um, with this shot because there is a bit of a story with this. I mean, just work with me, guys, that are listening on this one. As a kid, I used to be fascinated by seagulls and how they used to hover over a, a, a promenade or the pier and everything and how they used to shape their wings. And when I was coming into photography, I thought, how can I replicate that? So we bought 300 foot of vowel material. And I thought, how can I sculpture a bride into doing something different? So we wrapped 40 foot around Sarah and said, <laughs> you know, strike a pose for us. So she literally stru struck a pose. Sabrina was here on the right hand side, her left hand side. The groom was the other side, and I said, right, three, two, one, flick the vowel. I'm not kidding you guys. This vowel just hung there, and I was really fortunate. Because of my motorsport background, I just got it in one. That's not boasting or being arrogant or big-headed about it. I literally got it first time because it done exactly what. So I had the vision, and I tried to replicate that. Now, I was really fortunate with this image because this was the first major title I won. I actually won Photographer of the Year. Uh, for this image and I, without boasting too much I actually won it the following year and I won about 50 merits throughout the two years as well so it's just trying to do something different with Brian yeah. and Grooms we do bring props I mean with the first shot that you showed earlier with the guys with the cards we bring playing cards with us we bring beer bottles we bring hats we bring vowel materials, we bring some other little bits and pieces, just trying to do something a little bit different. But it's understanding composition, so we've got enough space around the image, the bride's looking into the side, and it just works. I mean, I've, would you believe, though, guys, I've never, ever been able to replicate this shot. You know, everyone thinks it's a real windy day, but it's not. It was such a still day, and I think that's why. I was very, very lucky. I had the vision. But it worked for me. I was very fortunate on this one. But I love this shot. That's great. I, I love how you take that, uh, you know, all, all the things that you learned from your motorsports background, apply yeah. to your photography and also your own artistic vision. And then yeah. uh, and then getting your, your bride you know, to just really buy into that is really, really awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, well, let's go to this uh, photograph yeah. of, of the groom, which, again, I think really speaks to your composition. Yeah, the, 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 this, this is quite a, a shot to remember, actually. This is a place called um, Scion Park. It's literally just behind Kew Gardens, and it was an absolutely baking day. And this was in the hotel lobby, and there was two professional football teams uh, uh, staying there. They were literally kept walking in front of this group. I'm not kidding, guys. I literally had five seconds to grab this shot. Now, my vision was, can you see the painting in the background? I tried to re replicate that, but not copy it identically. So I just said to the groom, can you just sit there, bring your hand onto your chin, relax your arm, and I've got this shot. And that, honestly, that was literally five seconds. I took this shot. Then about 20 people walked across, and they were Bradford City football team that were walking across it as well. So I literally took that shot, and then he went off and got his cravat on and everything. And you know, then we went to the actual venue and got the following shot. But I just love the way he's mirroring. The, the guy in the background, and everything about it just works. I wish his trousers were a little bit longer, though, so they would have come down. Yeah. And I think it really works black and white as well because it's replicating what's in the background as well. So I think compositionally wise, and it's understand. But just on the technical basis, this was shot on 3,200 ISO. There was a reflector just down off to the right-hand side, just kicking some light back from the spotlight. So it's just kicking back into his face. Yeah, and, and I can guarantee you he, he loves that photograph. Uh, yeah, he, he had a big that. enlargement on that one. He absolutely adored it. That, that's awesome. Great. That is wonderful. All right, and your final uh, best practice for capturing wedding memories is to enjoy the day and uh. have fun. And we can see that that's something that comes very natural to you, Kevin. You just delight. So. Yeah, no, it, it is. I mean, yes, it is a pressure environment, but 
if you go in there with the attitude that it's just another job, it's not. You know, you are capturing someone's special memories, and you've got to have fun. I mean, this one in particular, these guys were really awesome. They were such good fun. We we had a laugh all day. Yes, we was professional when they had to get people together for group shots. Yes, they done it, but it was having a great time, and you know. It's a shame I can't pop up some emails. I mean, we got an email today saying, you know, how lovely it was to have a photographer. All the guests complimented us because we was happy. We was enjoying the day. We was getting the shots. And also because we wasn't intrusive on their day. We was blending into the background with 200 mil lenses, just trying to get those natural shots. So, yes, we was doing some group shots with these guys, but we was trying to get them to enjoy their day so we can capture these natural shots as well. But these are the playing cards that I bring to weddings as well if the guys want to have a bit of fun. But this uh, basically comes from, uh, I used to watch a lot of Hollywood films with um, Humphrey Bogart and things like that. And this is where I just wanted to sort of get, really I've, I wanted to do it black and white, but their suits were so lovely, I wanted to keep it in colour on this one, but it's having fun, enjoy the day. As soon as you don't enjoy the day, I think that is the time to pack it in. My dad always taught me, son, if you don't get butterflies in your stomach before a wedding, give up. And I honestly always get butterflies in my stomach, which means I'm going to enjoy the day and I'm going to do it correctly. I hope that helps someone. Absolutely. That's beautiful, Kevin. You're awesome. You're Thank you very awesome. much. You're welcome. Great. Uh, so we are going to head back to see you full screen. <laughs> and if you guys, uh, <clears throat> if you guys have any other questions, you can leave comments on the video, and you can also check out Kevin's article on slrlounge.com. You can search his name, his last name, Pengeli, P-E-N-G-E-L-L-Y. And Kevin, <laughs> I know. Uh, we had said that you just came on as a Fundy ambassador. You want to yeah. give shout outs to uh, to Fundy or oh uh, yeah, I mean I've, I've got the companies that you love that you work with that help. Yeah, you. I mean there, there's two companies that I absolutely love, and I was really honoured and quite humbled actually last year, which was the highlight of my 2017s, is um, Callum of Loxley, he's uh, one of the, the, the managers there, flew down from Glasgow to ask me would I be a, a Loxley uh, ambassador, and they're basically one of the biggest album suppliers in Europe, and so I said, yeah, I would love to be. So they have really been awesome. You know, they're great guys to work with. They have got great products. The quality is superb. And they're just so lovely and so helpful. Oh. Yeah, people have problems, you know, but if you have got a slight problem, not that I have, you can phone them up and say, look, guys, this might not be right. They will sort it out. But also what tagged along with Loxley's is Fundy. Now, I can't praise Fundy enough, which is on my T-shirt, <laughs> Fundy Storyteller. And that software program, uh, the album designer, is just awesome. It has totally transformed how quickly I can design an album. And would you believe, using that software designer program, I've actually increased my album design sales. So we're actually selling more pages because what we do, we always say to our clients, you know, we're going to put a couple of extra pages in because I think certain images will work better with others. Okay. If you want them, you can. It's going to be X amount of pounds or dollars. If you don't want, we can take them out. More often than not, 99.9% .9 of the time they say, oh, that is awesome, Kevin. Keep them in. So they gladly pay the extras. So that's how it's helped me. So Loxley Color and Fundy Designer are just two awesome companies that work in hand in hand together. So they're just awesome. Fantastic. Well, Kevin, we cannot thank you enough for, for taking the time to do this. And before we go, we also want to remember everybody who's watching, you have until May 31st to submit to the SLR Lounge May Awards for Wedding Photography. And a reminder that premium members for SLR Lounge, not only do they get to submit up to three photographs a month towards the Wedding Awards, but you can also get a ton of partner discounts, including one for Fundy uh, for their... Um, their suite for um, 
Pro and album suites, mm -hmm. and uh, you can get fifty dollars off for that uh, for being a premium member. And there's tons of other partner discounts. And Amy and I will be back on June nineteenth with Chad Winstead and Beth Lang of Chad Winstead Photography, mm -hmm. and we're really excited to be online with them on June nineteenth. And Kevin, you are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much. We just had a great time, so thank you so much for Thanks. sharing. Not only your knowledge, but just your awesome heart for what you do. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much indeed, guys, for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Wonderful. Have a beautiful day. And you guys. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.